Like all knowledge, parenting ideas are constantly evolving. What you believe to be important rules to follow before you had a child are probably not what you have followed now. If you had to distill it down to what is most important, keeping your child alive, healthy and happy is really most parents' goal. So as long as you have dropped most of these 15 outdated parenting ideas, you're probably doing just fine. Welcome back, family. Let's delve into some outdated parenting ideas. Number one, blue is for boys and pink is for girls. The idea that gender has a color assignment seems bizarre today. The fact that we are born with any color prejudice seems hard to fathom if you consider it scientifically, which only helps to prove that it's completely taught. We all mostly like what we are familiar with. The same goes for what we teach children to favor when it comes to interests. Boys prefer rough and tumble more than girls only because of what they have been exposed to. If they are reinforced with play and quality time doing these things, they will enjoy them through the positive reinforcement. The same goes for girls and dolls, boys and contact sports, girls and chores, and boys and action figures. These are all just learned preferences. So if you want your child to learn about engineering and building, let them play with Lego. If you are a sporty family, then include everyone in sports, and your children will generally be sporty. If you enjoy cooking, then share that passion with all your children, whether they like pink or blue. Number two, babies and sleeping positions. There are so many old wives' tales when it comes to babies, children, and sleep. The main one that has radically changed is that you should put babies to sleep on their stomach. Thanks to scientific studies, we don't do this anymore. Putting a baby to sleep on their stomach is one of the known causes of SIDS, or Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Face down sleeping places pressure on the diaphragm. This cuts down on oxygen intake. Putting a baby to sleep on its back is the safest way, and a more than 50% decrease in SIDS from 1993 to 2010 in the US proves it. Number 3. Whiskey for the gums. When babies are teething, it can be an extremely stressful time, as your child is uncomfortable and likely to be in a bad mood because of it. It was considered good practice to tackle the issue of teething by rubbing whiskey or brandy on babies' gums to ease them. But the truth is that the American Association of Pediatrics and the FDA list that alcohol of any amount is harmful to a baby. Then there is the age-old tradition of rubbing garlic on a baby's teething gums. This isn't recommended by science because until about eight months, a baby's stomach is not equipped to digest things like garlic. Desperate parents then turn to the wonders of a teething necklace. According to marketing, teething necklaces are made from Baltic amber. This is thought to reduce inflammation in the baby, which decreases the pain from teething. So, does it work? Well, science says it's all mumbo jumbo, and the risk it poses of choking or strangulation is far higher than the potential benefits. Studies suggest that the safest and most effective way to help your baby is to give them a firm rubber teething ring or gently massaging their gums with a clean finger. Number four, baby walkers teach baby to move. Baby walkers were believed to help infants get mobile and go rogue around the house with no care for balance on wheels. While this sounds like a public safety nightmare to let the equivalent of a mini drunk driver loose on your house, it also has no benefit for baby. It actually delays development in several ways. It prevents the natural course of motor and mental development that comes from working out how to stand, balance and step. A further risk is that it gives babies mobility and access to reach things that they don't have the sensibility to handle just yet. Challenges like stairs, sharp objects, and china vases are all suddenly in the reach of a rookie driver. Thankfully, the baby walker has gone out of fashion as a method to get baby to walk. Number five, babies need silence when they sleep. Unless you want to spend the next 18 years of your life being quiet while your kids sleep, best to stop this practice now. Long gone are the days of shh, the baby is sleeping methodology when it comes to nap time and enter the era of turn up the music, rearrange the cupboards or enjoy a home Zumba class while your tiny tot catches some Z's. This will lend to a much more restful sleeper who is used to onboarding natural safe sounds and zoning them out. Number six, dancing babies. It was previously thought that letting your baby stand and bounce on your lap was damaging to growing legs. 
It was even believed that it would lead to bowed legs. But the truth is that it's shown to be great exercise for baby. It makes their legs and core stronger in the process. Naturally, take your lead from baby's face and sounds to know if they are comfortable and happy. But if they are having fun, then bop away. Number 7. Baby Bathing Babies used to be subjected to a decent daily bathing ritual without exception. But it's not necessary. Babies only need two to three full baths a week and are kept quite happy and healthy with a daily face and hand wash. And of course, keeping their bottoms nice and clean. Number 8. Corporal Punishment Spare the rod, spoil the child was a common method when attempting to raise well-disciplined kids. But psychology today refers to physical punishment as a major public health problem in the US. They draw that conclusion from a wide body of research that has proven it both unproductive as discipline and harmful for a child's development and overall well-being. The tables have turned on spanking and in 2015, a Pew study found that only 4% of parents say that they spank their children often. Number 9. Finish all the food on your plate. While it can be a pain in the butt when your child leaves half their meal, if they aren't losing weight, then there is no harm in it. The old school rule of finish all the food on your plate before you can leave the table has since been tossed. Children need to recognize when they are hungry, not bored, tired, emotional, or just thirsty. And in the same way, they need to know when they are full and stop eating. Of course, we aren't suggesting you should let your child get away with eating the meat and potatoes and leaving all their veggies because they are now miraculously full. In that case, they should be given a smaller portion of food to make sure they get a well-balanced diet. The Association of American Pediatrics says that there's absolutely no reason to provide pressure for children with normal development and health to eat. Number 10. Kids and germs. Don't kiss the baby. Fully wash your breasts before feeding. Keep pets away from babies and other myths have all been thrown out with the bathwater when it comes to keeping babies safe from illnesses. We aren't suggesting that every stranger that looks at your cute baby should kiss them. Babies need a natural and slow exposure to germs from the tribe of people surrounding them. And more importantly, they thrive from love and physical touch. And kisses and hugs are the best way for family and friends to show it. Science is exploding with studies on the advantages of healthy dirt, like the microorganism phages, found in healthy soil. This is theorized to build up antibodies to many illnesses and diseases, while time outdoors is also linked to lowering inflammatory conditions. So dirt is not all bad, just use common sense and moderation. Number 11. Toys in early childhood. There was an old wives' tale that you shouldn't buy baby any toys until they ask for them by themselves. It's a curious one, but is popular in many countries. Something about picturing a child communicating that they need a set of stacking rings or a puzzle seems a bit bizarre. It raises so many questions. How does the child know about these toys if they haven't seen them? How would they know when they need them? What is the baby signal for saying, floaty bath duck? Thankfully, most parents introduce stimulating toys from early in a baby's development. There is plenty of learning and coordination that even tiny babies learn from toys. So keeping them away until they are speaking seems like a missed opportunity in childhood development. Number 12. Ice cream causes colds. Perhaps this was popularized by a company selling hot desserts, but it was thought that if a mother eats ice cream during pregnancy, it can make baby sick. The science behind it was thought to be that eating ice cream brings down a mother's temperature and makes baby cold and ill. There is so much wrong with this one, where do you even start? A mom would have to eat kilograms of ice cream for it to lower her body temperature. And what about mothers who live in cold areas? Surely that has the same effect. The truth is that the only way babies receive nutrients is once the food is already processed and passed through the umbilical cord in the form of proteins, fats and carbohydrates. So order the sprinkles and the cherry on top if you want. Baby will be none the wiser. Number 13. Let crying babies lie. The cried out method of self-soothing is incredibly hard for parents. So is there a real benefit? The thing is, babies don't have the mental capacity to know that crying gets them attention or even to work out why they are crying. It's like a natural trip switch in them when they experience feelings of discomfort. 
In fact, in their first two years of life, it is hard to follow a normal needs-based routine and spoil a child. It is always recommended that you check to see what is wrong. Usually there is a physical or environmental factor, and once that is settled, the baby will settle down. When this doesn't happen, you shouldn't feel pressured into tough love. And don't worry about spoiling them until they become a toddler. Do what comes naturally when it comes to comforting your baby, and they will not endure feelings of abandonment and unnecessary discomfort. Number 14. Weird Cures for Kids Here are some real classics and luckily defunct cures for common childhood ailments. Thank goodness for antihistamine because previously the cure for itchy chickenpox was to turn your child's clothes inside out. If your baby has dysplasia, this can be cured simply by letting your darling child suck on a herring's tail. Yep, a displaced hip can be solved with a nice fishy snack. Of course, there are plenty of hair-brained folksy cures available online if you dare to Google your child's symptoms. We recommend always consulting a medical professional before you expose your child to a crazy homemade remedy. Number 15. The stricter you are, the more successful the child. Running a regimental household doesn't always lead to the best results. Like corporal punishment, instilling fear and inflexible homes doesn't teach a child to be responsible and manage their own emotions and reactions. Without communication and a degree of flexibility, children can lead to being approval focused and too eager to please. Parenting experts suggest a balance of clear routine and behavioral expectations, mixed with a space for children to fail and take responsibility for their own self-management. If you want some good advice on raising successful children, why not listen for free on Audible using alax.com forward slash free book. That's our sister channel. And we recommend How to Raise Successful People by Esther Wojcicki, the mother of YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki and 23andMe founder Anne Wojcicki and UCSF doctor and researcher Janet Wojcicki. We also highlight other must-reads in our video, Top 10 Best Parenting Books. So new parents, what is the best and worst parenting advice you have ever received? And now for our bonus fact, just to say thanks for sticking with us to the end. Spicy Mama The long-standing myth is that breastfeeding mothers need to give up spicy food. Spicy food was thought to ruin breast milk, but the truth is quite the contrary. A baby's preference for food begins with breastfeeding because a baby will adopt their mother's preferences when it comes to taste. Traces of what a mother eats do filter through to the breast milk, so mothers are encouraged to eat a wide variety of foods to introduce babies to a varied diet later on in life. So remain healthy and enjoy a healthy and balanced diet, including all the herbs and spices you enjoy. Thanks for watching, family. We'll see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and to give this one a great big like.